In this video, Mark DeShever is going to show us how to use Tassos Marinos. I've never heard that pronounced actually to my ear, so I apologize if that's the wrong pronunciation. A uh, new custom field for OpenStreetMap. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too, and uh, welcome to a very early version of Watch Me Work live stream. Here on the left coast of Canada, it is 6 o'clock in the morning, and for those of you that bet against me getting up in time for this, you lose your hard-earned money. Uh, anyways, yeah, so this is the next in a series of videos uh, that uh, I've been doing with Mark as he shows us uh, the really cool things that you can do with custom fields and with uh, Joomla layout overrides. And so we're going to cut right to Mark here. I just have to figure out how to change. There he is on the left-hand side. Hi. Don't forget, uh, just one last note, head on over to basicjoomla.com forward slash giveaways, sign up for the newsletter and you'll be automatically entered into the monthly giveaway. Each month, you just have to sign up and you're in there. Mark, good morning. No, a good afternoon to you. It's three o'clock in Belgium. Yeah, my day is almost over. Yeah, my day <laughs> no, feels not like yet, it's almost but, uh... over too. <laughs> what was that? My day is almost over, but not yet. I'm not just teasing. I see the sun is shining there. Uh, there's no sun today. It's quite cloudy, but um, yeah, it's like between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius. Nice. All right. Well, take her away. I'll make you full screen here if I know how to do that. That would be to the pin video. There we go. All right. So I should share my screen, I think. That will help. Uh, but I've forgotten how I would do that. Um, uh, uh, d d d mouse to the bottom of your screen, you'll see a green button that says share. Invite participant. Oh yeah, share. Yeah, yeah there you go. Big green one. Okay, good. It's okay. It's early. It's early in the morning there. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So screen number two, I think. Yeah. There we go. You have my screen? I can okay, see good. it. Yes. So, so welcome to this session. And indeed, we'll, we'll see how to play with uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so this is the episode number three of our series about custom fields. So obviously, we will talk about custom fields. And I will start with the end. May I? Um, so this is what we will achieve at the end of the session. If you want an easy, an, an easy solution, you can stop earlier. But at the end of the session, we will have such a map. This is an interactive map. And I can, I can zoom on it. I even have clustering. Sorry, I have the dog coming crazy here. Uh, uh, we're, not, we're not worried about the dog. If you have to do <laughs> something with the dog, that's fine. OK. So you can you can zoom on the map and uh, have cluttering, and so you can see that we have different colors for our markers. So we have obviously uh, marker for each for each article. So I'll explain that later. And last but not least, we will even have filters so that, like in this example, I've made two categories. One for Joomla days, one for Joomla user groups, and you can even filter on the map the Joomla user group and the uh, Joomla. So that's the idea to be able to do something like this just with a simple custom field, the one, uh, as you said, uh, that Tassos released yesterday. Oh, um, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Nice. It was a release candidate, and uh, it uh, was released officially yesterday. Um, so, I wonder if he appreciate. I wonder if he appreciated us uh, setting up this live stream, so he had to hurry up and finish it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, so, as usual, if you go to my website to slides.woluweb.be, then you reach this page where you have all the presentations we have made together, and even other ones. So, the previous episode about custom fields. You can find them back here. And the very last session, this present session, is this one, uh, OpenStreetMap. 
So I will open it twice because you can choose. It's the same presentation, but you have two layouts. Um, you have one which is really like a presentation in the form of slides, like this. And the other one is like if you want to print or if you want to have an overview or to go quickly through all of it without having to press 50 times space to go to the next slide. Here you have the long version, the text version. Um, right, so maybe I will use um, I will use both. So what are we what are we about to do? Um, we will build an open street map based on custom fees. Okay, so we can add an open street map to articles, but the goal here is really to say, oh, I want, for example, a module which will show not only uh, an open street map for one article, but for all articles, right? So a multi an open street map with multiple markers. Um, so that's the idea. We will start with something very easy, like um, you will see that here. Um, no, this one. So that will be the simple case. That's very easy to do because you don't have different markers according to the different categories. It's just the basic marker. Um, of course, you have tooltips. And in the tooltips, I put the title of the article and the link to the article. So it does work. Like if I take this one and I click on it, uh, I get to my article where I see the uh, custom view. Um, wait, I moved too fast. All right. So this is the most simple multiple marker OpenStreetMap that we will build. This is the very first one. Then we will think, oh, but it would have been so nice to have different markers according to the category. So that will be the next step to say, OK, let's use our own markups, our own markers, and then have even different colors for each of the categories. And then that was not enough. Uh, this is where I stood yesterday uh, in the morning. Then I was thinking, oh, it would be so nice to go one last step uh, forward and to have clustering so that, you know, when when you zoom out or you zoom in, uh, all the markers which are too close from each other just gather, just cluster uh, under that round ball with a, a number in it. And also the last idea was to say, oh, it's all very nice, but it would be nice also to be able to filter. Here are only filter on two categories, but you can imagine that for any type of website, mm -hmm. so maybe you would have 10 categories. I'm just showing here an example. So that's what we are about to do. Um, so the online demo, um, if you go to the website joomlacustomfields.org, the English page, because uh, I've only made it in English, uh, there you will, you can play live with the website, right? The website I just shown you. All right, just typing that in the chat. Yep. JumaCustomFields.org okay. forward slash en. Then, how are we going to build that multiple marker map? We will need um, a script, a tool to do that. And that tool, well, there are different tools out there, but uh, one very famous uh, open source JavaScript library to do that, to play with maps, is Leaflet. JS. So if I open that website, uh, you have an example, for example, for this map, right, that you see on the home page. Mm -hmm. So leaflet.js.com. You see a simple map. And actually, you realize that uh, the code is very easy. You don't even have to understand everything. You just understand that there are a number of lines, OK. And the, this is the latitude, the longitude. Do you pronounce it like that? Latitude, yep. longitude? Yes. OK. Yep. Um, so latitude is 51. Longitude is uh, node dot node 9. OK. 
and we say, okay, we add it to the map. And we even have, as you can see, a little tooltip. So the little tooltip is here, a pretty CSS3 pop-up. Break, um, go to the next line, easily customizable, right? So actually to build one simple map with one, with one point is no more than those few lines of code, right? Right. And the key thing, if you wanted to have another map with your address, for example, Tim, you would just change, copy paste that and change, change the latitude and longitude. That's it. Nothing more, right? Be a lot so, easier if there was a custom field that you could just put in those stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even better, of course. But it's just to say that actually, um, when I had proposed to you this session, I had never played with maps and with leaflet. So this was a new um, feed of discovery for myself. And uh, when I started to look at the pages and seeing the examples, I was thinking, oh, actually, it's not that hard even to make funny things. And each time you think, oh, now I, I have a basic map. I will go to the next step and improve and improve. Um, so that's we are what we are going to do. So our tool will be leaflet to build our multiple marker map. Uh, then, of course, we need uh, Joomla custom fields, OpenStreetMap custom fields. So I have found three OpenStreetMap custom fields out there, and maybe there are even more that I'm not aware of, but uh, I've found three, and each has its qualities, of course. Um, one. The one we'll use today is the one by Tassos, Tassos Marinos from Greece. And um, what is very nice with this uh, pack is that it includes not only OpenStreetMap, that is new since yesterday, but uh, you have like more than 25 different custom fields. So that's quite, that's quite interesting. Yeah. So you have OpenStreetMap, but also Google Maps, Bing Maps. And let's even go to his website for a second. Um, wait, free versus pro. So for what we are going to do today, the free version is enough because, um, as it is today, there is no difference for the open street map custom feed between free and pro. Maybe it will improve the pro version and add, I don't know, add spe special things. Um, but so you have a free and a pro version and with plenty of custom fees like telephone, YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, SoundCloud, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, Facebook Video, TrueForce, Time Picker, Currency, Country, HTML5, Video, Audio, iFrame, Email, etc., etc. So maybe with the pro nice version, piece. maybe with the pro version, it will include you going to someone's house and setting things up. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but uh, in the pro version, you also have a file upload, for example, which um, can be interesting. Um, right, so this is the custom field we are going to use today, but it's not the only one. Um, there is also one by Nort Mograf, uh, a guy from uh, France, and that's very interesting. Um, this is only 10 euros, and I'll go to his website as well, if I manage, because... Uh, Okay, it's, here it's... I, I cannot I cannot access my because of because of Zoom oh, I have I um, the control panel just on top of my tabs. Okay, so that's his custom field, and if you go to his website, actually he has plenty of interesting things. So. I will go to the demo. Right, Mark, so. that, that control tab at the top of Zoom, if you left click on it, you can move it around. All oh, right, okay. Uh, I'll try to, okay, maybe that could be better. Okay, fine. Um, so I have not been there recently, like, wait. So Nordmograph offers more than just this custom field. He has different extensions. And like, uh, right, do you see here? Yes. That's something crazy, right? You yeah. can gather, you can gather 
the localization from easy social, jump, jump social, community okay. builder, um, Google map, open street map, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you really, you can go very far with, with that, right? Because it's not just one custom field. Yeah. There is also a full expansion on top of that. Okay. Um, so that's very interesting as well. The one by Lomograph. And I found a third one also from uh, a guy from France. And that one is free. It's um, JMAP FP. Probably most of you have already seen that because he has. He also offers plenty. Is there an English version of the website? I haven't looked. But so okay, he has a um, OpenStreetMap custom field and different others, uh, other extensions uh, having to do with maps, uh, etc. So okay. just you see like this. Okay, just have a look for yourself. Um, I am not sponsored in any way, <laughs> and all three would have been nice to use, but I've chosen one of. Uh, Tassos also for one practical reason for today. Um, it's that in the database, it will only write the latitude and the longitude, right? Mm -hmm. While some of the others I've mentioned also write the zoom level or the text you want to add in, in the tooltip or whatever. But then it means that when I will manipulate the value of the custom field, it has some extra information that I don't need to make my multiple marker map. So it would be easier just to use um, this one by Tassos. Um, right. Now, um, as we have seen, by default, we have, I will close those. By default, with we have those, uh, markers, right? The blue markers. But at some point, I will wish to use my own markers. And here, I have even found a transparent marker. You see that the, All right, yeah. the hole, there is a hole in, in the... In the middle. In the middle, right? So uh, it means it's a transparent image. Actually, it's, it's not even a PNG. It's a S V G. Okay. Right? So it's a vector. It means the advantage of using a vector is that the image is always perfect, whatever the size. Even if you put it on the Empire State Building, it will still be perfect, right? Mm, yeah. No matter how huge or how tiny you will display it, it will always be it's a vector. So it's always nice. You don't have pixels um, everywhere. So that's one reason to use uh, SVG. And the other interesting fact is that if I, wait, um, do you, no, I will move this window. Wait. Right, do you see the new window coming? Yes. Okay. That's the website, right? Uh, this is my FTP, so I see I see the website. Right. Um, and these are my few SVG uh, files, so the, the marker, the blue, the green one, the red one, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, if I if I open them in in my browser, it will look like this, right? Right. It's an image. But actually, what many people don't know is that SVG, you can just edit it with your regular editor. Oh, right? I did not Notes. know that. Like, oh no, I have like okay. Notepad. Wait, can I open it with Notepad, right? Yeah. And I have to go and fetch it. And actually, an SVG. If you do that with uh, JPG, uh, PNG, whatever, you can't do anything, right? It, it, it's, it's, an yeah. it's an image, so you, you cannot edit it. But here, SVG uh, is actually a text file. So actually, when I download, um, where did I find this map marker? I think I've written it here. Um, 
I, I made a few search and I found on icon finder if the connection yep on this website I found okay I thought I like this one right the first one yeah so I downloaded it and then I opened it in my notepad and I said well let's find the colors look um Phil, here I have a color in hexadecimal mm -hmm. format, right? You see? Yeah. And here I also have another color. Why do I have two colors? Just because on, on this map marker, it's regular red and dark red in the middle. Okay. Right? So that's why I have two colors here. So if you just edit it, like I will go and find like the green one say I open this notepad and I go and fetch it to show you right okay so actually I downloaded a red one and I want it also a blue and a green one I just copied the file mm -hmm. and I and I changed the color right I changed the reference changed, of the yeah, colors. changing the hex, hex code to the colors that you yeah, want exactly so it's very nice because it's easier than if you have to play with Photoshop or whatever to change the color of your image, right? It's just text. Nice, and they're That's... nice and small as well. Yeah, exactly. It's quite efficient. So I did not know it. that about SVG that you could just edit them. Yeah, it's, it's it's very handy. And sometimes you say, oh, when I open the image by default, it's too big or too small. You just edit, and you will see that it will be 1000 by 1000 and then you change it to 100 by 100 and then it opens by default smaller um, so now we have everything we need uh, on the website uh, what have I done I've just prepared a few categories uh, okay I'm logged out no it's not this where is my Right, that one. So I won't do everything from scratch because we've already done that the previous sessions, right? Uh, so I have created a global category named Joomla events with two subcategories, Joomla user groups and Joomla days, okay. right? And I've created a few articles for Joomla user groups, I have two. And for Joomla days, I have three. If I click on the button, probably you know that. If I click on, on the number, then it opens the corresponding page in the back end with the filters. I think already. I knew that. I, I think I knew that about clicking on the number, but. Uh, yeah. Um, but that's OK, because that's a great idea for one of my maintenance Mondays. So I'm writing that down. <laughs> OK. And that was made by uh, Peter Martin. We had a chat at some Joomla day in France one day when uh, he was invited. And during um, the coffee break, I had a chat and say, oh, I just missed that, missed that feature from Joomla 1.5. Are you serious? Oh, yes, that's true. And next day he came, well, if I code it, will you test it? Of course. <laughs> um, but it's very handy when you, have, when you want to have a global view well, here it's a basic website. It's just a test website. When you have hundreds of articles, and then you realize some categories are not used, some categories should be split, um, whatever. You, yeah. you, you really have a global view of all your content. Uh, but that's something different. Right. So I've created my categories, my articles, and then um, I have installed in content fields, I have uh clicked on new now uh, you're making the fields uh yeah exactly. so you've already made the field group yeah i've already made that okay yeah i, I won't repeat everything i explained in the previous yes the and uh so uh, yeah and at this point uh we we'll just encourage people to go back and see part two of this series where you are building the site for uh, recipes and go step by step through each of those things. Yeah, exactly. And you have the slides on slides.wordweb.be. So if you 
if you don't have two hours to to watch the detailed video, you you can go over. It no, no, no. We want them to watch the two. Uh, we want them to watch the two-hour okay. video. It's good for. Uh, and actually, if you go to basic, uh, if you go to that video, you can find a link to basicjuma.com to a page on there, and I have all the links for you to click on as well. So okay. I'll put that all in the. Uh, we'll put all that stuff in the video description for this once it uh, the replay goes live. Yeah. So here, when I create a new custom feed, I see that uh, beyond the regular ones you see here at the end, I have plenty of ACF advanced custom fields by Tassos. So here I will choose, of course, the OpenStreetMap custom field. And then, like in my case, uh, I had created a field group. So the field group allows to have a special tab with that name when you edit the article. So I will have a tab named uh, Joomla Events. We'll see that in a minute. And then I will say to which categories it applies, right? So what I could do is select one by one Joomla user groups and Joomla days right but in some cases when you have plenty of categories maybe you don't want to select them one by one because maybe each year you have new categories or and it's pain in the neck so actually what you can do is just create a parent category and then if i select joomla events it means that my custom field will apply to all the subcategories hmm. so it will be less um, administration, less administrative work when you work with big sites. Um, right, so you just basically do this. I give a name to this custom field, like OSM for, oh, it could be, it could have been open source matters, right? The organization yeah. running Joomla worldwide, but uh, this stands for open street model, open street map, of course. Um, and okay, I, I can I can also set different um, options like the width, the default width. So typically for a map, what you would do is choose one hundred percent. So according to the place you have on your website, it would take the full width. Uh, for the height, well, maybe we can choose a bit more than three hundred fifty. So I don't know, four hundred fifty. And you can also say the select the default zoom level, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go from, uh, can you go that far now? I don't think so. Well, <laughs> ju just start with uh, what was suggested. It yeah. was 12, I think uh, it does not really matter. And then play um, around with it, because is, is higher zoomed in or is that zoomed out? Uh, the yeah. higher the figure, the closer you are, you okay. And then, very nice, uh, in the back end, uh, it proposes you um, a show address input, right? Right. It was on yes. I will leave it on yes. You will see immediately what it is. So here, my custom feed is ready, right? Uh, I will, OK. In this case, I won't save it because I've already created it a few days ago, right? OK. So I won't, I won't save it, but actually, it's just the one here, right? OK. That's like on the cooking show when you say, okay, now, and you walk over to the oven and you pull it out all cooked. Yeah. Um, so here we are. Now, indeed, if I edit an article, like I will go to my categories and I edit a Joomla day, uh, like Joomla day, the French speaking Joomla day, I had created. Um, uh, field group, so that's why I have uh, a tab called Joomla events, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if I don't create um, that field group, it would still work. It would just be called fields, right? Generic term. But if you want to to have your own name here on the tab, you create um, a group. And here you see exactly uh, what we have with uh, Tassos uh, OpenStreetMap custom field is that um, this is what I was mentioning. We have this bar where we can make a search. So that's very, very easy because um, 
with some extensions dealing with maps, you have to enter latitude and longitude manually, right? Yes. So you have to you have to go on the internet and find a tool to select the latitude and longitude. Or Here you can, very easy. or sometimes you can pull it out of the really long, ugly URL that. Uh, that yeah. Also. Yeah. But here, what is very nice, of course, if I have a map and, and I want it to uh, select another place, I, I can just take the marker and move it, right? So this would work. It's very manual. But if I type an address, like I would type Brussels, like in my case. Uh, OK, not even mentioning a street in my case. Sure, just yeah. making it easy. Because you, so, okay. you can type the street as well. Of course. Yeah. This is Brussels, right? You see that around there. Um, I can even share my address with you. Right. So I can even be more precise. And now that's where I live. Okay. In Brussels. And immediately it translates the address here into the um, latitude. Longitude and latitude. And I could still move it like I can zoom. And if I want to point not to my house, but to my garden, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. say I want it to point to my garden. I can move this and the latitude, longitude have changed. Now that's, you you have the exact address of my garden. That's where all the gold is buried. Oh, gosh, I was. Uh, are we online? <laughs> Right, so um, another nice, nice little feature that Tassos introduced yesterday uh, is this clear button, right? Because okay. by default, you could not empty it. So you had to, you had always uh, geolocalization. And by default, it was Greece. <laughs> I guess Tassos <laughs> home. Uh, so now it's very handy because like if you want to say, oh, no, for the Joomla day, we don't. We don't know yet where will be the next one, right? Yeah. So I could say, OK, I clear it. And now it's empty. And again, I can make a search uh, and, 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 and say, I want something in Canada. Canada. Ooh. Is this really Canada was empty? Uh, yeah, there's oh, a yeah, lot of space I, I, here. I, I, you have to zoom yeah. out. I've zoomed, yeah, okay. And it's probably going to put it in the center of Canada, and where the center of Canada is absolutely like the middle of nowhere, so. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yeah, that's the center okay, of Canada. Okay, you see. <laughs> yeah, you're getting there. Okay. Oh, yeah, up in the, uh, I think that's Northwest uh, Northwest Territories, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you can really play with that. It's very handy. In the database, it will only write the latitude and longitude, but we have a nice tool to clear. We have a nice search engine, and we can move the marker and, and zoom in and out. Great. Uh, what I've also done, I did not mention it, I added uh, a text custom field. Okay. Just for the fun. Just because uh, at some point, I knew you would ask me, uh, hey, Mark, why don't you add a custom field in the tooltip? So I created this text field just to show that we can do it as well. Um, so right, that's so, going to be where the, that's going to be where the tooltip yeah. pulls the information from. So here it is. We have all our articles, and as we had already seen, if I go to uh, any of my maps, and we were at Joomla Day Paris, we would see the title with the link to the article and also that custom field, text custom field I added, right? Mm -hmm. And if I click on the article, all right, it opens exactly the map that I have decided in the back end, right? Right. Um, and that map is in there from the custom field. Yeah, that's a map from the custom field. So, so far I've done nothing except installing the open street um, custom field and it works. But as it is now, okay, for each of my events, I can have a map, but I don't have a map with all my points, with all my localizations, right? Mm -hmm. That's the idea now to start to create something like this. 
a multiple marker map, right? Yeah. Like typically when you have members, you want to have a map with all the members. Mm -hmm. When you have cinemas, uh, theaters, you want to have a map with all. So it's very easy. We will install that custom field and then we will create a map gathering, showing all, all our articles on one single global map. Yeah, and that could be anything. It could be uh, uh, gas stations. It could be any yeah, locations yeah, exactly. of your clients. Exactly. Whatever. Here I've made a simple example with just two types of events um, just to show how it is. Um, then one special thing about this session is that most of the time we show how to make overrides, right? Or alternate layouts. It has. It's not exactly, it's, it's the same principle. Uh, it's a little bit di different. An override will override all the views and not in it layout it will allow you to choose between the regular view or your alternate layout. But basically, okay. when you create them, it, it's about the same. Um, so we've already played with overrides the last times, right? And you even played without me when you built uh, your carousel, yes. your slideshow, right? Yeah, when Vinny was showing us how to do that, yes. So now you have become an expert in overrides, right? And you've realized, uh, well, probably a few months ago, you had little experience with that. And now you start to feel that it's not that hard. It's even, it's almost easy once you've done it once or twice. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, um, I don't always use overrides. And, and some people maybe are not comfortable with PHP. And if you, even if you don't have to know everything, uh, far from that, but so here I wanted to show an alternative method that you can play with um, without making overrides. And for this, we will use articles anywhere because in article anywheres, or at least the pro version, you can loop through articles, right? right. You can say, hey, I, I want to loop through all the articles from this and that category and show the title and the intro image, this kind of things. Yes. So we will play with uh, regular apps, uh, extension uh, names, articles anywhere. And um, and that, that this the pro version to do what you're going to do, right? Is that what I just read? Yeah. For that, you need a pro version. If, if you're not willing to to play with overrides, with real overrides, then there is a, a price literally a little price to pay yeah. paying, uh, the price of the extension. But sometimes like, um, let's take the website of the last Joomla day. Um, this page with all the sessions, right? The mm -hmm. different rooms and the different slots and all the sessions. This is all made with articles. Each session is an article, right? Right. And this table is made automatically, not playing with overrides, but playing with articles anywhere. So I use it a lot myself. I can also make overrides, but sometimes it's more convenient, quicker uh, to make a first a first draft in uh, with articles anywhere. And sometimes I don't bother to play with overrides. But just use the, um, the way you, you prefer. Some people don't know override so this is a nice alternative and that site you just showed us you kind of uh, showed more of the secret sauce of that in a previous uh in yeah. previous video in this series exactly and so since anyway you're busy with the regular lab website <laughs> you can also install we replace uh, because um as i explained here then for example in your article you will write osm between curly brackets and it will be replaced by the whole code we have. It avoids your end users to play with your code without knowing what they're doing and breaking everything, for example, mm -hmm. right? Or also sometimes when you type that code with a bit of JavaScript, etc., maybe your probably your editor, uh, be it JCE or another one, would strip some part of the code. So of course it will not work. But if you use re-replacer, you have a solution for those two uh, problems. You're sure that your end users won't interfere with the code because they have a, 
a, a little short code like uh, OSM between curly brackets. And for yourself, um, it also means that you, you're not at risk that you, uh, you delete or that the, the editor deletes some part of your code. Um, well, okay. We will see this data uh, after. We will first start with a simple example. Um, let's take on the leaflet website, right? There is a tutorial menu. So I'll just take the first one. Leaflet quick start guides. That's a very simple map. So if I click on the link just below the map, see this example standalone. Okay, then I only have the map. I can right click if I'm curious and see the uh, source code, right? And I have the source code of this of this page. Okay. I could copy paste it in, in an article, but if I do that, I would my editor would would scrap would strip some part of, of the code. So actually, what I will do just to show that's the the quick start. I've reproduced it on the website, right? So what have I done? I've just created a simple article. The quick start. Right. And you see, I've created a short code called OSM quick between curly brackets, right? Mm -hmm. So in my article, I just type this. Then when I go uh, to re replacer, I have said I've created, I've, I've clicked on new, of course, and I've created what I will show now. I've said, okay, uh, I, my zoom is too big. Um, replace OSM quick between curly brackets by my code, right? Right. So and this that, way, and that keeps your editor from stripping out all that yeah, stuff. Exactly. And as you can see, if you press on F10, then you toggle to full screen, which is also easier when you edit your your code. So the other thing too is that that's nice because if you ever do want to change that, you can just change it in re replacer, and it will automatically be updated everywhere in your site. Exactly. That's another advantage. I did not even mention. So. Here, what have I done? It's just a copy paste of the code. Where is it now? Um, yeah, here. Uh, that was the website of leaflets. It was the quick start example. I opened the map. I just look at the code and I've copy pasted everything in the body, right? Right. But so this I find indeed here, right? It's just a simple copy paste. I've not changed anything. The only thing, just be aware when you go here, you take everything which was in the body, but there is also, you also need the leaflet.css, mm -hmm. so the styling and the JavaScript, so the leaflet.js. Right. Okay. So these two lines, I also need them. So I could put them in my template if there is most of the templates propose a place to copy paste what you want in the head section. Right. right. Yeah. Just for the sake of uh, making it simple today. Right. You're not building a perfect website. I will just copy it here together with my real code, right? Okay. So not in the head, I will put it really w where my map is on, on, on the page, but it, it works, right? But yes, theoretically, cause... you're supposed to put those links in the head section of your page, but never mind, it works. And, th and this way I can copy paste, uh, you can copy paste the code easily to your website. And different templates have different ways of doing that. Some are easier than yeah. others. So here, so, so far, it's just a copy-paste, right? 
of those two things. And I press F10 to come back here. I just close it. And indeed, when I go to my website, it is OSM examples. It was a quick start and it works. It has reproduced the example on the website. So before starting to play with your own things and your category and to loop through your category, just take a simple example, check if it works, and then you can start building on that, right? Yes. It's easier. So at least I'm sure that there is no incompatibility with my template or whatever. Here I'm just using Protostar, so of course um, I have no issues. Um, so that was the first step. We have our first map, right? Without doing an override. Um, but then I want to go further. I want to have my own my own places on that on that map. So let's go back to the presentation. Um, how does article anywhere work actually uh well you can go to the website to see the full tutorial because you can do really many 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 things with, <laughs> uh, with uh, articles anywhere but yeah. what we need here is very easy we just want to loop uh through one or several categories so to do that you just write between curly bracket curly brackets articles and you close it with slash articles. And then you would say between brackets, title, if you want the title, intro image, if you want the intro image. But here, what I want to fetch from my articles is the latitude and longitude, right? Right. So it's the open street map. This is the name I gave to my custom. Field. So if I would have named it uh, Mark, then I would have to type Mark here, right? It's, it's just the name I chose. So choose accordingly to what you gave uh, when creating the custom panel. So just open street map between brackets should be enough. But just to be sure, I even add output equals value. Because then I'm sure it will take the raw value of the field, right? Okay. And not and the... render it like some custom field you can have uh, for YouTube video. The raw value is the link to the video, but the rendered value is the real video playing, all right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can choose between showing the value or showing the raw value. Um, and this is the way to show the raw value in uh, articles anyway. So OpenStreetMap is the name of the custom field and yeah. uh output is the value that will be in that bottom oh. row after you pick the location that shows longitude and latitude, yeah. la la latitude. exactly so when if I, on my website if i type this right uh, what i will get is for each article of the joomla day category uh, i will get the latitude longitude okay mm -hmm. And that's the whole idea, because this is, it is what I will need. Um, so let's make our first, very first map, right? A map with all articles of one category. Um, OK, override number one. So let's go to re replace uh, OSM1. So actually, this is this is almost the code I had from the previous example, right? From the basic example they were showing. Uh, it's a basic copy paste of everything. What did I change compared to the previous basic standard example? I have seen that there was a variable to select the icon, right? Right. There was a value for maybe I should open both. Then we can uh, wait. I I will open both. And here. 
So that was the example from their website. But actually, um, it was even showing a circle and a polygon. I don't right. need that, right? Uh, this is confusing for me. So actually, I, I've just started from that, and I slightly adapted what I needed. Um, when you want to choose your own icon, this is the code you you need to have is JavaScript, right? You create right. a variable, you give it a name. I have called it my own icon, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you just have to give the path to the image, right? So here it is map map marker because in my um, here in my folder images on my website, right. I have There's... map marker, map marker, blue, map marker, green, and also red. So okay. that's where you have the SVG files that you were showing and exactly. the JavaScript, uh, the code that you have right here has those two lines that you pulled from the top. And then yeah, you've exactly. got the script that you got from the original. So in your case, you would just copy paste this, right? Mm -hmm. And just adapt the name of your image. Maybe the image is in your case, team.svg, right? Right. Or maybe you have put it in another folder, like uh, images, logos, uh, slash team.svg. So it does not matter yeah. where you put it. You just have to be uh, coherent and put there, of course, the right path to the, to the image. Um, here there is even a parameter to show, to select the size of the of the map marker, right? So let's play with that. Let's suppose I put 100 and 100. Um, I will save it. I go back to the website. Whoa! <laughs> right? So yep. it's actually, I would not be, uh, where is it? Here. I would not be able to write this from scratch, right? Right. But when I have an, the example, I can just copy paste it, and then I understand that I can change the link to the image there. I can change the size, the size of the uh, of the marker. So actually, changing something which already exists is very easy. And then, how do we add um, all the points to the map? It is this this line of code, right? Okay. This line of code says. Um, well, we will add a marker. You see, there is marker, uh, plenty of information, and add to map. So this is the line which adds a coordinate to the map. And the way it works is that it is marker and between brackets, etc. You put latitude, longitude, right? Just mm -hmm. when when we were okay. That's the example, the basic example they were giving on their website. You see, right. marker, latitude, longitude, add to map. So basically, OK. And then they have added, um, how should I say, pop, pop. a tooltip, yeah. and they've written it after, right? Here, I've put everything on one line, but basically, it's the same thing. So actually, what I will do with articles anywhere, I will loop through all my articles, right? Yeah. From the category, well, in this case, recipes, because <laughs> I built it on the example of the last. Yes. <laughs> um, so I will loop through all the articles of the category recipes, and every time I will add a marker, and the marker will have the latitude, longitude, which is to be found in the our OpenStreetMap custom field. Right. So that's this little code now in red I'm showing. Yeah. I want my own icon. I don't want their blue icon. I want my red icon. So I've added this to say, hey, look, I want as an icon, I want my own icon, which I have defined before, right? Okay, defined before up there in the script. 
Yeah. And then I also say, but I want a tool tip. And in, in the language, it's called bind pop-up. Okay, bind pop-up. And there is just how you write it with articles anywhere. When you want to show the title, you write title between brackets, right? Right. When you, well, I would just move the link. That could be an art, that could be an image, that could be the article yeah, body be, or the yeah. intro. Well, when you make your test, just do it gradually, right? Yes, start exactly. Start with standard text, and then you, you, you can start improving and, and going further. So let's assume I save this and I refresh my page. Okay, now, again, it's not 100 pixels, it's 30 pixels. If I click on it, I have the title in the tooltip, but there is no link on my, right? You see, there is right. no link. So there is no link because where should I go here? With Articles Anywhere, I've just written title. In Articles Anywhere, when you want the link, you type link, and then whatever you want, in this case, a title, and then slash link, right, between brackets. And Regular Labs has a ton of documentation for the different things that you can do yeah. there. So that's it. Um, again, now, if I go, I refresh the page. Now, not only, I have not only the text, but the text has become an hyperlink, an hyperlink to my article. And that's very nice because if I see the URL of the article, it is the Ceph URL, the search engine friendly URL, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's it. So actually, even if you, no, it was not that one, it was this one. Even if you don't know anything about overrides, right? You just install articles anywhere and re replace her to make it easier, right? Right. You copy paste this. You just change the link to your image and the size of the image, if you want to. You just select here the category of your website. Maybe it's members, then you put members. Maybe it's a petrol station, then you write petrol station, whatever. And you can write several, you can have several categories. Like if I write uh, Joomla base, I think I wrote it like that with capital D, um, well, maybe I should write, uh, I will write Joomla user groups because they are closer on the map. Uh, Jax, I will see what it gives. Valerie said in chat, thank you. She's definitely not comfortable with overrides yet. So the demonstration of regular labs is really helpful. Yeah. But she said, great. You see, on my map, now I've put two categories. Instead of just writing, where was I? No, that's not the right one. I will close that one. Um, here, instead of only showing the category recipes, I will show several categories, recipes and Joomla user groups. And now on my website, if I zoom out, I see indeed my two recipes of last time, pasta and pizza, but I also have the Joomla user group Flanders and uh, Joomla user group Wallonie, right? Mm -hmm. So not bad because when you think of it, it's n not more than this, right? Yeah, just a little bit of code there. And Each. you don't have to be an expert and to be able to write it from scratch. You just copy paste it and you adapt it. Yeah, and just not um, uh, don't be overwhelmed because each one of these little things does a, each one of those bits does a little thing, and you were just putting them together simply. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've not said when you uh, you you can say where in the settings of the map there is here a parameter to say. Uh, what should be the center of the map, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a parameter. I, I've put Brussels, I think, as, as the center of my map, but you could put 
any latitude longitude of course okay. and also the level of zoom so here i could say oh no i want zoom nine um because i I will put again the Joomla user group so that when I save and oh, I've lost my mouse uh, here and I refresh, I refresh this page. Well, this is Zoom 9 now, right? Mm -hmm. So you can change. That's why I see the four, the four locations. So that's it. There is no more than this, and we are already very far. The only thing is that at some point you think, oh, yeah, but now, now, that, now that I can do this, I would like to do the same, but to have different markers according to the category, right? right. So let's try to do that. This is um, OSM2. So. What will be the difference with OSM1? Wait, I just save it, but without the jacks there. Right. And I will put again the original value, 12. I'm going to guess that in the script, you're going to start putting some if statements. Um, We'll see. I'm not, <laughs> not, not even ifs, I think. Um, of course, I don't. That, uh, that, is that, what's that script? Java? Yeah, it's JavaScript. Yeah, so. Um, so now the difference is that I have two icons. Uh, what I would call Jux icon for Joomla user groups, okay. right? And Joomla days icons. Oh. I could have copy pasted what I had done in my previous example, but since we want to do things uh, as nicely as possible, actually, when you start to have several type of markers, uh, there is a technique with leaflet, which allows to say, well, actually what I'm doing is just changing the color, right? Right. Uh, all the rest like, uh, the size, or where should the where should the tooltip come, right? Or where should uh, what should the marker show? Should it be the bottom of the marker, the middle of the marker? Which which point of the marker should be the latitude and longitude, right? How should the image be positioned? Um, so actually, we're written this because then we don't have to repeat it even if i had 50 categories well all the common things i've written i've written it under sorry i've written it under my own icon right right and all the common uh parameters i've put there i want all to be 40 by 40 the size right okay. I want all to, when I, when I see the map marker, right? Right. You see my mouse? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we see it. What I want to be shown is not the center of the image. It's not the center of the image, which should be on the latitude, longitude, right? Mm -hmm. It's just the bottom of the image, the bottom center of the image. This okay. is what I want to show, right? Do you get and what so, I'm... So that's going to point right to the location instead of having the yeah. center of the image. Yeah, because you could have a, an image, I don't know, uh, 90 degrees turned 90 degrees, or you can, you, know, you could ju just have uh, something round and then it would be the center. Right. Here, actually, my image should, be, should not be centered around the latitude longitude. It should be put on top of the latitude longitude, right? Because... Because this is the, um, the shape of my it. map marker. Yeah. So that, that's what we can say. I want all my map markers to be 40 by 40. And I want them um, to point to uh, not the left, not the right, the middle, so 20. 
and not the top of the image it will be the, the bottom of the image so it's 40 right so my image is 40 by 40 do you get that yep and what i want is the uh, anchor the coordinate. The yeah the anchor is the is 2040 right so that's what i'm writing here okay and for the pop-up i can also say where it should be okay and so this is this would be common to all my icons and now i start um i start to explain what is my joomla user group icon and what's my joomla day icon right mm -hmm. my joomla user group icon well the only thing which i still have to say is which image because all the rest is already defined okay so the image is the blue marker in my case and for the joomla days icon the link is to the uh, green marker okay and you're making you're making variables that you're adding to this code now yeah exactly and why did i call them not uh one and two but Jux icon and Juma Days icon. So Actually, you can, so you can remember what the heck's going on when you're working on it. Yeah, also, but Jux, Jux is the alias. If I go back to my website, if I go to my categories, you see my category Joomla user group. Okay. Its alias is Jux. And Joomla Days, its alias is uh, Joomla Days without spaces, without capital letters, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, I'm just using a trick here to make it simple. Because now, when I will add all my points, it's exactly the same code as we had before, right? It's I'm saying I want to show all the articles from several categories right but here i just say oh let's choose instead of saying jugs and joomla days i will select the parent category joomla events okay and i will say let us include all the child categories so include child categories is true again i've done it so you just have to copy paste right right um Right, so we have all the articles from those two categories. And then what's the difference in this line? The only difference is that instead of saying icon is my own icon, it will fetch the category alias, right? In articles anywhere, title means title. And how do you call the alias of a category? You call it by writing category dash alias okay. between brackets so actually for when it will loop here on all the articles um every time it will write either jux icon or uh joomla days icon right mm -hmm. automatically because i've exploited the fact that um, i use the name of my category and i've named my images uh, my variable for the images accordingly. So that way it is easy to set up. Yeah. So, so you just, again, uh, uh, I'll just put my mouse on here. Just this, these three lines are all articles anywhere codes, and you're setting the values for different things that appear in here. Yeah. And so I use category alias so that it will go, sometimes it will become Jax icon, sometimes it will become Juma Days icon, right? because I've said category alias icon. Um, and so it will give this the present map. So we have something nice, two, two different categories. Each category has its own color. And when you click on it, you see that uh, we have the title. And we also see that the tooltip is well placed. I think that in our previous example, you see, in our previous example, we had not mentioned where the tooltip should start. Mm -hmm. So the tool, the tooltip is st 
starting in the middle of my marker, which is not very nice. So here we have improved on that because in this example, in this example now, the tooltip is above my oh, okay. marker. And so that is what we were saying before. We have said the pop-up anchor should be somewhere over there. Minus 45. So it's actually five above where the yeah. SVG is. Yeah. So um, that's it. Again, without any, any override. So even if Joomla 4 uh, is released, most probably, I guess that um, Peter Van Westen will still be there, and uh, I guess that Articles Anywhere will still work on... Um, if he's uh, not, we're in work. trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it will still be adapted to Joomla 4, so it means that what you're doing here should still be working with Joomla 4, right? Right. But you do not depend on a template, you do not depend on the override made within a template, uh, it's, it works, it keeps working on all your sites. So it's easy. Um, what have I made? Okay, I have a third example, but it was just to show that um, on the second example, when you load the map, all the tooltips are closed, right? Mm -hmm. which, is, which is often what you wish. But um, you could also add a little line to say, oh, I want, I want one of the map markers, well, one, sorry, one of the tooltips to be opened. So let's go back to the presentation. Because we've done many things, right? Oh yeah, there's one thing I did not mention. Um, So actually, to do that, I, you just add a line, open the code, open pop-up, and then the tooltip will open automatically, right? For the it's last, just a, the last article. Thing. Actually, yeah, the la yeah, because it can only open one at a time in this case. So uh, the way the way we have done it, um, but it means if you go to leaflet and you see all the possibilities you have with leaflet. Most of the time is just one extra line of code, like example. Um, at some point, wait, I... A scale, no, it's not a scale. Like, I wanted to say that there is an option to say, I want to show the scale or not. You see here, okay, yeah. 100 kilometers or not. So for plenty of little things, these are just options, just one line of code to add or to remove. So if you go to the leaflet website, you can really, if you're curious, you can say, oh, that, that option, I want it. And you just adapt the code accordingly. Okay. So here, basically, we are done. I, I, I've gone as far as I wanted to go with without override, right? Just you wanted to show using... where you put the code for the, to have the last pop-up? Yeah, so um, I just closed the previous one, OSM2, so OSM3. Right, I make it bigger. So I just add it open pop-up. At the end. Yeah, here. And even though it's looping inside there, uh, it only shows the last one. Yeah, because it loops, and I think that actually it opens every, every time it adds a point, it opens a tooltip, but it has no time because it goes too fast. Okay, so oh, okay, um, they're all opening, so, but the, okay. okay. Probably it would not be the ideal way to do it, but it was just to show that if you go to Leaflet and, and, and see documentation, maybe you will find some options that you want for your case. Um, and most of the time, it's not harder than just, OK, it was what I wanted to show. You see here the control scale, add to map. Mm -hmm. This is the line of code to add this. OK. Maybe you don't need that, and then you remove it, or if you want it. So 
Of course, the code was very short in the beginning. Now we're starting to add a scale to customize the map markers according to the category. So our code is becoming longer. But um, there's probably other yeah. things like satellite view or something, or other things like uh, satellite view. Does OpenStreetMaps? Oh and... yeah, I have not played with that. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. No, but yeah. Okay. So, but you can just add out. You can just add options to it. Yeah. So, again, if you go to the Leaflet website and to the tutorial, you have, for example, layer groups here. There is a working example where you can choose between street and grayscale, okay. and is is the same if you choose choose satellite and streets, for example. Okay. Right. So uh, they show how to do it if you need it. Good. Um, right. So that's it for all the um, the explanations about how to do it without override which can be very handy. As I say, sometimes sometimes I could do it with an override, but I'm too lazy and it would be faster <laughs> with that override. And maybe it will come on different pages and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I, I use that a lot. Like I was saying, this page of the Joomla Day website is made with uh, articles anywhere. But it's very handy. Now, before you move on, there's a question here from Valerie. She says, as somebody with no experience yet with frameworks, Asteroid or Gantry, is there a potential complication or whatever that she should be aware of? No, I don't think so. Yeah, the cause... only thing is that, as I was saying, we, we have somewhere the scripts at the beginning here of our code. We we have one 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 line saying, uh, this is the CSS, mm -hmm. and the other line is this is the JS, the JavaScript. Yeah. Actually, I've put it, I've put it in the middle of my page, right? But I, I'm supposed to put it in the header. Yeah. And so, according to the framework, well, you just open your template and you see where you can copy paste it. Yeah. Um, but even this, like, even this should, even this should work in a framework, just in the, in as yeah, you're yeah, doing it. Yeah. Okay, unless the framework uses leaflet, but another version, and then you have yeah. a conflict. But All right. um, or unless you use an extension using an old version, and then you have two JavaScript conflicting. Or okay, yeah. this should not uh, arise, but it, it could in some cases. Um, right. So what I also have because I mentioned that in the beginning to make it simple but um, at some point in my code if you copy paste my code it will work right mm -hmm. but when I first made it I copy pasted the example on leaflet website right so it was double quotes um, the text of your tooltip so in my case it's a title with a link and double quotes right but if you do that, there is no map appearing. Why? Just because, actually, what is a title with a link? In HTML, you also have double quotes. Meaning that actually, in your code, the code read things that you have finished, the, you have opened and closed double quotes, but you're not. You are in the middle of the thing, and so it breaks. Okay. That's why a very quick solution for me was just to change the double quotes by the simple quote. Okay. Right? But it, again, if you copy paste here, I, I've written it with simple quotes, right? Like order was with double quotes, but here for the tooltip, I've put simple quotes. Okay. But I mention it because if you copy paste some example of somebody else, you think, hey, why is it not working? Well, actually, it's that. Uh, where is it now? That never happens to me. Everything I copy and paste works perfectly the first try. Uh, sure. <laughs> but another way to, to do it, uh, maybe even even better, would be to, uh, you could also write explicitly in HTML, this is the, the tag to, to have a link, 
and the, the URL in articles anywhere, you can write URL or even better search engine friendly URL, right? Seth URL. Mm -hmm. And so these are two solutions. This, this is the quickest one. This is another one which is more universal, right? Just to avoid that trick with uh, double quotes and simple quotes. And, uh, yeah. Because when you do it yourself, this, this one does not mean that we have finished, right? This right. one just means we are, I'm in the middle. So I escape it. I write a backslash before it, right? Okay. If you're a bit acquainted with coding, it's quite typical. When you have to type a quote or a simple or double quote, but you're not meaning that you're closing something or opening something. It's just a character. Uh, then you just escape it with backslash. And again, SEF URL and title, there are, your, that's from uh, that's articles, from articles anywhere. anywhere. From articles anywhere. Yeah. That's the way to have the link, uh, the search engine friendly link, not the technical link. Uh, com articles ID and whatever. Uh, another thing I did not mention. Um, yeah, in regular labs, uh, there is one option that I disabled in the configuration. I will show you, and you have to because otherwise it will not work, right? Um, so if you go to articles anywhere yep so not the button obviously but really the system plugin there is one option where was it uh, okay here so you edit the plugin you go to the last tab called advanced right mm -hmm. there you have place HTML comments, right? And by default, it is set to yes. Okay. But if you leave it like that, it will not work for what we are doing now. Okay. For, for, for normal usage uh, of articles anywhere, it's, it's handy because when you look at the code, you see, oh, there it starts, there it ends. But in our case, the JavaScript would just be interrupted because of that code. Okay. Uh, so you just have to set it to no uh, for this to work. Otherwise, um, yeah, actually what, what we have, uh, otherwise in the HTML, where was I here? Okay. Otherwise we have, I will just copy paste it in, where is notepad? Wait, I move my window. Right. Otherwise, in the HTML code of your website, you have you have something like this, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at the source code. Uh, and those this, are just comments that wouldn't show up. These are comments and it it has no there is no problem with comments when you use Articles anywhere in normal conditions, but here we are doing it in a JavaScript. And if you add this, then the JavaScript will just stop because it will be confused. So, so that what, that option actually just puts the uh, those yeah, comments it turns in. This so when off, and then you're just fine. Right? So that when you're looking at the code, you see the comments and it tells you what's happening, but you don't want that in there because it yeah. messes up the JavaScript. Exactly. So. We are very far already, uh, is we, well, I'll close those windows. So we have said everything we wanted to say about how to play with the multiple marker open street map uh, without override. Mm -hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those who want to go one step further, because you can always do more with an override. Right. Here comes the uh, here comes the flaming dessert at the end of the feast. Yeah. So, do you remember how to create an override? I do. Um, so, <laughs> we go to extensions, templates, 
and then we don't choose tiles, we choose templates. Right, then, okay, on this website I have two templates, but the one I'm, I'm working with now for this demonstration is Protostar. Um, so I just click on Protostar, and I have access to all the files of the templates. So I just go to the tab Create Overrides, and there we can create overrides. Like, um, in our case, we will use a module. Why do I choose a module? Because then you could put your map anywhere on any page, right? Okay. I could make an override for the block view, the menu block view. Right. But, okay, you could do it. It's not that there is a good way or a bad way, but for what I want to do, a module is more appropriate. Yeah, and that's a, so, that's a good point because you could then, you can have this, you can put the module on the page or else you can put the module on different in another position, module position. On different pages, no matter the content of that page, I can show the map. Uh, okay, so well, that's module, good because I'm still sometimes a little confused where or what kind of override I want to do. So that's, that's, that, that, that helps. And then, um, which module shall I use? Um, well, I will use... Article latest. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. But so to create my override, I just click on article mod article latest. I click on it, and it has created my override. And it says me where in templates protostar HTML mod articles latest. So let's go there. HTML mod article latest, and you see that I've made my homework. <laughs> I already have different um, alternate layout. Okay. So actually, what's the difference between, just a reminder, between an override and an alternate layout? Um, all those open street map stuff and print R are mine, right? So you're right. not supposed to see that. It's just because I made my homework for the session. Yeah. Now, the file we have just created together one minute ago is the default.php file. Meaning that when I edit that file, if I uh, add a text, if I add a text, right? Well, this will be the new view for all modules, right? All latest news modules. Sometimes it's what you want. You're not happy with the module from your template. You want a different layout. And you want it to be uh, to have priority over everywhere, then you use an override. But sometimes, what you want to have is an alternative. It's just to say, no, I don't want to. I want to keep the original version of my template. I just want an extra version, right? An alternative. And so, in that case, what I do is that simply I rename the file. And I name it Tim. Oh, a small, okay, Tim, for example. No, I like the all caps, Tim. That's the way it should be said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now, because I have Tim, let's say um, here I add this is Tim's special uh, alternate. Layout mm -hmm. and I save. The principle of an alternate layout is the following. If you take a module like latest news, um, yeah, I will, I will create a new one. It's even clear. I create a new latest news module. And here for the category, uh, I choose whatever I want, like in my case, uh, Joomla events, mm -hmm. or I could say Joomla user group and Joomla days, right? Count. The count, okay, if I say five, after five articles, it will stop, right? <laughs> it's okay. what it means. So actually, for you, I've tested it. If you set it to zero, 
it does not mean that it will output zero articles. It means that it never reaches the limit, so it will show all articles. Right? Okay. Um, I've lost my mouse. Okay. Here. I'll give the title. Tim's module. Okay. And the thing now is that actually on the advanced tab, I have the choice between different layouts. The default layout yeah. from the template. Or now I had made an override of it. And that override, I gave it another name. So actually it becomes what we call an alternate layout. Mm -hmm. And so here I have all the list. I can have different views. OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap Advanced, OpenStreetMap Basic, Print R, and Tim. Yeah. So let's suppose... Uh, well, I put that in banner position on the home page. Uh, on the home page. Let's see what it would give. That's in English. All right. That's Tim's module, right? Yeah. And of course, here, what did I do? do in the um, layout override where is it now you just take okay in the layout override the normal view is just um uh, an unordered list of article titles with links so it is an unordered list of article titles with links okay here in the loop so for each article you see there is a for each list as item, okay, you don't have to understand everything, but you guess it means for each article. Uh, for each article, I've written here, this is Tim's special alternative layout. And that's why on the website, uh, not that page, that's why on the website, it keeps repeating, mm -hmm. this is Tim's special alternate layout, right? Right. So that's the principle, the general principle of um, of overrides and alternate layout. And so to summarize, just if you leave it, if you make an override and leave it named default.php, that changes everywhere. Yeah. Um, if you if you rename it, then you can assign it to different places. The other yeah, thing exactly. too is the other thing too is that if you use underscore in a name. It will not show up in the drop down that hides it, which is uh, so sometimes we put underscore in just to spell it out. But that uh, you, you won't you don't get the option to select it if you have underscore. Yeah. Because it has a different meaning, but OK, let's leave that aside. Um, so, OK, that's a principle. And why did I choose article latest? The main advantage is that you see, it's very simple. There are very few um, um, options here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's basically the choosing the category and count. And then I can also say, oh, do I have to show the featured article? Yes, only the featured. Or, OK, show them no matter what. Or, no, don't show them. So, OK, you have a few um, options, but not many. If we had, uh, I will unpublish it. Like if you did this in an article override, you'd have everything such as publish time and author and. Yeah. So here I had chosen the module called latest new, uh, latest articles, right? Mm -hmm. And I like that one because as you could see, this is the code. Oh no, it's even shorter because this is what I added. Okay. That module, this is all the code there is in that module, right? So mm -hmm. it's very easy to uh, customize. You're not confused because, well, you see there is a loop for each article and then you make a list of it and you give, it's a link, a link to the article and you show the title. So there is little uh, to play with. If we would take another type of module, like, uh, and sometimes I use them when I need it, right? But uh, if I take Newsflash, 
Um, Got a lot more. Or was it? Yeah. You see, I start to have many, many options. And then when I make the override or the alternate layout, the code I have to start with is already very long. And maybe I could make a mistake or I don't need all those options. So mm -hmm. let's keep it simple. I like latest news because it's very, very short. Yeah, that's a good tip. But there is always a drawback. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if we had used News Flash, you see that uh, by default, we had trigger plugin events. OK, I, I had never paid attention before preparing this session, right? Um, but actually, if it is set to no, you don't have access to the custom fields. No. Oh. Well, it, it has more impact, but one of the consequences, if it is set to no, is that you don't have access to the custom fields. If you set it to yes, you're happy. You have access to the custom fields in the code just by copy pasting what we had seen last time, right? Um, and what is very, very sad is that with latest news is the same with latest news. If I create a module latest news, I don't have access to that custom fields. But I love custom fields, so of course I want to have access to them. Mm -hmm. And we will see because I had an exchange with uh, Alexandre Elysée. Um, and it gave me a nice little solution to uh, uh, a nice workaround. For that. Oh, okay. So, see that right now. Uh, so where are we? Yes, with override. So in an override, normally when you want to insert custom fields with ID, I don't know, five. Right. You just write this line and you replace X by five, right? But as I was just saying, in in Newsflash, we have that, but not in article latest. And so Alexandre Elysée has, well, I had a chat with, with him a while ago and, he gave, and I asked him, but uh, how can we do very easily to... Uh, to have access to the custom fields. And then he said, oh, very easy. I will write you a few lines. So actually, when you just add, well, zoom. Well, you recognize it is the, it is the code of a, a regular module. But if we just add this line and that line, then we have access to the custom fields, right? OK. So it's very easy because by default, we would not have access, but just by writing those two lines, we will be able to have access even uh, where normally you don't have. So let's see what it gives. Um, I've made three examples every time from the easiest one to the most sophisticated. So open street map, oh, no, the basic one first. So, OK, uh, let's zoom a bit so that we see. That's maybe too much, right? Can I? Oh, yeah, I can also do that, right? So here I'm the in my alternate layout, OpenStreet Basic. So, Open you've, made, you, so you've made a uh, custom layout and, uh, yeah. and named it OpenStreetMap Basic. Yeah. And so you, you have the code in my presentation, right? Okay. So you just, all you have to do is to copy paste it. Copy and paste. Um, and so here is the code. And basically is the same thing as we had before, except you are not using articles anywhere anymore, right? So before in articles anywhere, we were writing uh, between curly brackets, articles, uh, category equals Joomla Day, right? Right. So here, we will also have a loop. And the loop, this is just a code which already was in my basic, um, well, if I go back to Tim, right? Mm -hmm. 
if you see the for each, meaning right. for each article will do something, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, it's the same. It's the basic. Sorry, I was too fast. The basic. So basically, it's the same thing. We are looping through all the articles. I don't even have to say which category in my code because which category will it be? It will just be the category selected in my module itself. So it's not my problem anymore to put that in the code, right? Because it's a parameter the end user can can play with. Which will be yourself. nice because you may want to have multiple maps and you just select different categories as you make different modules. Yeah. So here, with just one alternate layout, you could sometimes have one category, sometimes two, sometimes ten. Uh, it, it, you just select them, and, and that's it. And so um, these lines of code, well, obviously what is in brown is just comments that I have left okay. so that every, everyone can understand from where it comes from, and also with the link to Alexandre uh page where he explained that so actually we add those two lines of code to say okay we will fetch the custom fields and then this is a very smart line to say and we want it to be even easier than you know sometimes when you have to use the ids you don't remember whether your custom field is id 12 or 13 or 5 right so here we will Thanks to uh, Alexandre's solution here, we can even use their name, fields by name, right? Because okay. with, with custom fields, even though you name it, say you name the, the field OpenStreetMap, there's a number, an ID number assigned to it. And yeah. that's what if you in the editor insert the field, it puts in the ID number. So this changes it so you can use the name. Yeah, exactly. And so the rest is just a little uh adaptation of what we had previously it's always the same story basically so here i'm just saying well since i am playing with php right i can do more things than when i was just playing with articles anywhere like here i can say hey but i only want to add a localization on the map only if the user has set the, the localization latitude longitude in the article, maybe the user has not done it for all articles yet. And then there would be an error. And if there is an error, then the map won't show, right? So this we would not we did not have in the previous versions. We saw without overrides, because it would have been too complicated to do it without overrides. Here it's easy. I'm just saying, well, just in case the user would not have filled in a latitude and longitude, okay, if he has not filled in, then we'll just ignore, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, if not, the exclamation mark means not, if, um, if the open street map row value is not empty, then I add the map marker. Okay. And and if uh, it is empty, that's not true, and it just skips to and, and yeah, loops to again. To the next article, right? Yeah. So this is some extra we did not have uh, in the previous examples. And this so is it's this, an improvement. This looks this may look to some people a little more complicated, but you have a lot of lines of comments in there, so it's still yeah, that exactly. very basic small one. All that is brown is com is just comments to make it easier once you understand it. And, yeah. and but and you don't even have sometimes I make overrides. I don't I don't even spend the time to understand the code. I just copy paste and I change the one line I need to change. I mean, so most of, that's how you learn, right? You can yep. start easily and you don't have to understand everything you do. You have a nice working example. You duplicate it and then you improve a little bit. Of well, and Christoph uh, is here in chat, and earlier he said uh, talked about season one, episode three of Custom Fields with Tim and Mark. So, uh, but you know, by the time we're up to season four and episode twelve, 
uh, we'll just uh, be blowing everyone's minds. They'll have to wa go back and binge watch all the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, season one, exactly. Um, then, so here, basically, do you remember that, that thing I, I was telling about the um, double quotes? Mm -hmm. that you have to escape otherwise the javascript is lost because he thinks you have added uh, ended a line mm -hmm. while you're still busy you're just adding a, a hyperlink and the hyperlink needs double quotes so actually here i use i explain it i use h i use this in php called html special characters so it means that if I take the title and if there is a quote in the title, you know, in French, you have quotes when you say uh, the friend in French, say l'ami, and mm -hmm. between the two words, you have a simple quote, right? Right. So here I'm improving on what we, we had. I'm saying even in the title of the article, we could have a quote. If we ever have a quote, we, we are dead, right? The map won't show. Right. So here I have a solution for that because it's easy. It's PHP. So the solution is to use just this thing, which uh, takes care of the quotes, simple quotes and double quotes, right? So actually item title is a title of the article. So it will say, okay, if you ever encounter a quote in the title, you will just escape it so that there will be no error. Um, so the map marker here, what do we do? We echo, so we display, we display, what do we display? Field by name. It is the variable we have created to fetch all our custom field by name. And I just say which one I want. I want the open street map field. Okay. And I want to take the raw value. And then again, bind pop-up means uh, that we are adding the tooltip. And there, same story. We are just putting the, the hyperlink to the title. The title is item link here. And OK, it's just, it's just saying we take the title and we put a, a hyperlink on it, right? Okay. And we add this to the map. That's it. And you're explaining this, but anybody can just cut and paste. Yeah, here, actually, I just could have gone straight to the last slide and say, copy, paste, that's no, it. Goodbye. No, no, exactly. But uh, no, yeah, uh, Damien said here, it begins to be a bit complicated for me. We'll wait for the French version. I'm guessing we will <laughs> wait the Damien. So I told him that you can cut and paste in any language. Yeah, exactly. But it's good, so this... it's, it's good for us to go through this like you are, because then we pick up the coding and different things and it helps down the road troubleshooting. Yeah. The code works. So uh, I've made all the first like HTML special cars. I had never used that myself before. I, I knew a bit what it was, right? Mm -hmm. But it's because here I was saying, oh, the map is not showing. Why? Oh, I have a quote in my title. Oh, I have to find a solution. And OK, so I've already done a series of things here to make uh, so that our override is maybe not perfect, but uh, goes already quite far. Right. So with this OpenStreetMap basic, we have, uh, what do we have? We have this. We have selected the two categories. And every time we have a tooltip and the tooltip has the title with the link, right? But it is better than what we had done with that override because we even managed the case where, where the latitude, longitude would not be filled in. We also managed a case where there would be a quote in the title of the article. So, okay, it's, in many cases, it would work just the same. But in some cases, this would work better because it's an override, right? And we have, and I've made more things. So um, we're almost done now. We 
that was the basic version. Now we want to do the intermediate version, where we use our own uh, map marker, so different colors according to Juma Days or Juma User Group, and also let's add uh, another custom field and tooltip, the custom field country that I created, a text custom field. So, uh, well, we already gone through the explanation of that when we did it with articles anywhere. So actually it's about the same code. Um, well, I do this. So, Again, now, since I want two colors, it is the same as we did before. Okay. I've just created Jux icon, Jux icon and Joomla Days icons pointing to uh, a different directory, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I should have written images, in fact. Well, actually, I have my images at two places. Let me just check my images, whether I had deleted them from the root or not. Up images. Um, so basically, you just co copy paste and uh, is the same thing, except we have gone. Yeah, where was it? What have I taken here? Is that the advanced? Oh, sorry. I mean the advanced one. So oh, okay. It was the intermediate. So I was thinking this is too long. <laughs> um, okay. We have different icons. It is in the right directory. Fine. Um, and then what did I want to show? All right, point pop up. Okay, here, uh, I wasn't finding it. Okay, I've created a new variable called custom pop up, right? Just to make it easier. Otherwise, my line here about the marker was starting to become very long, right? Okay. So it's in the bind pop up that we would that we use to write the text for our tooltip. So okay. I've just created a variable so that I have a special line just for that. Okay. It's more readable, right? Okay, well, that's, that's an interesting way to do it. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And so it's just exactly the same. We just put a link, a link with a title, and we close the link. Oh, and we close the link. We go to the next line, and there we just... Here, I select that. Here, we just echo, we display uh, fields by name, and we choose the field name country, mm -hmm. and we take its value. And that's why I see Belgium under Jacques Wallonie. That's why I see France under Jumade France. That's why I see Germany between Jumade DE, right? Mm -hmm. Just because, well, no matter how many custom fields I want to add, it's not more than copy pasting this and changing country to, uh, I don't know, to boss, owner, uh, whatever field I've created, right? And once we were there, I had a chat uh, the other day with uh, Philippe Lambert, and Philippe Lambert is a member of my Joomla user group, and he has is pretty much acquainted with um, uh, maps because uh, his job, in his job, he has made this, this website, right? Uh, Surviving in Brussels is for the homeless. Okay. Right? Is that correct? For the homeless? So where can they find uh, a shower? And then you click on shower and you have a map, you see, with 
okay. all the places where they can have a shine. So I thought, oh, that guy is very nice. It will help me uh, because there is one thing, one extra thing I wanted to do on this website is to have what we see this here is uh, the clustering. You see? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here maybe it's not that necessary because I only have five five points on my map, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have 300 points on your map. And, and, and so if you don't have clustering, then all, all the map markers are on top of each other and you, yep. can't re you can't click on any of them. Here it's easy. You just click on this, on this uh, circle, right? And it will zoom and split the points behind that. So like this. Nice. Automatically. That's one thing I wanted to have. And so uh, Philip uh, uh, builds on, on my override to say, to add the few lines of code uh, that were necessary. And then I also wanted to have a possibility to filter. Wait, I just zoom a bit more like this and to be able to display only jugs or only Joomla days, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking that normally you would have more than two categories, maybe sure, sure. Like 10 categories, whatever. That's a use case. And so that's what um, Philip uh, uh, made for me, that advanced version. So again, every time we started with something not longer than 10 lines of code, right? Right. Now, I do agree, it starts to be longer, right? Yeah. Also, because we've put plenty of comments so that people can also, uh, maybe the code is not perfect. Maybe if we could improve it a bit here or there. But the idea is to be um, ped pedagogy. How do you say that? The idea is to be. Uh, when you teach, the idea is to be clear for the people who learn, right? Oh yeah, yes. And 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 and, and not to uh, put three lines into one because it would be more efficient, but then nobody can read, right? Yeah, no, exactly. So probably we can improve on this code, right? This code was made for the session to make uh, a step-by-step -step approach. Well, I won't um, be improving it. I'll just be using it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking at first. I was happy with my first map, and every time the next day I was thinking. Oh, and what about adding this? You know, um, uh, Peter Van Westen had a, a, I watched a video of a presentation that he did, and he talked about encoding how a lot of times people, instead of putting um, the full name of a variable, they would just do something, they would abbreviate it. So instead of putting in Tim Davis, they'd put TD. And his point was that uh, with internet connections and computers being how fast they are now, the difference in characters doesn't at this level and just in the code doesn't make much of a yeah. difference in time. And then if you actually use the longer version, when you come back to the code later on, you can remember what's going on instead of just thinking, oh my goodness, what's TD or what's, you know, you just start to see things. Yeah. So here I, I won't explain all the code because again, it's the same story. You just copy paste it and it's quite just to give a clue um, for the clustering. Yeah. For the clustering, uh, he has put the link to the plugin uh, so that people can have more information. And basically, you just add those three lines, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. Cluster. Eight, nine. Oh, yeah. And one thing is that here, OK, these lines are also new, uh, a few lines there. But there is even a variable use clustering, true or false, okay. right? So it's quite generic. If you would say, I want this override because I want the filters, but I don't need the, have to say, the clustering, you just write false here, right? OK. And that's it. It works. So as you see, it's just a few lines of code he added, and we have extra functionality. Nice. And there are many things if you go on the Leaflet website and you see all the plugins which are available to to add other possibilities to the maps. 
well, you can do cr crazy things. We've gone quite far today, but you can even go further. Of course. Um, so yeah, you just copy it. And uh, well, I even I think I even added the intro image, for example. In the code, okay, right? nice. Uh, because when you want to use the intro image, uh, mm -mm. where is it? Uh, here. When you want to use the intro image, well, actually, you should go. You should edit some other Joomla PHP page, and where there is an intro image, and then you would see how it is coded, and you will see that when when you need to use the intro image, actually, you have to JSON decode mm -hmm. uh, the images of this article, and then afterwards, uh, you can say. Uh, article image and you select uh, image intro and right? that is a really fun tip for using overrides because um, for so for another example would be if you wanted to have the the author name of the article that's represented there you just could go to the art say to an articles layout find out the code where the author's name is put in copy it and paste it in here and it'll work mm -hmm. in that place yeah, and you make me think of something that I've put in the presentation, but I've not said it because there are many things we can say once we start. Um, where did I put Tim's? I don't know Tim's modules. Um, Tim, I will I will republish you. Um, <laughs> so. In my layout, alternate layout, I had one called print R, right? Okay. Um, and we will see what it does. So I republish the article. I go back to the home page. Huh. And gosh, look at what we have. <laughs> Actually, um, oh, intro, wait, I have to, to edit. One second. Um, dip, dip, dip. Okay, I don't need that. Sorry, because I was playing with this to 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 test something else, but I had not cancelled. So save. So what is the print R? Is just one line of code. We are saying it's it's still based on article latest, right? Right. But we have oversimplified it. So <laughs> for each article, what we want to have is to print R will display all, all the things which are available in the article, right? In the article, if I write ID, I will get 12. It is the article having ID 12. Okay. The title is Joomla Day NL. The alias is Joomla Day in without capital letters dash NL. There is no intro text, okay, because it's a dummy website. Uh, date of creation. You see, if you don't know, oh, I want to display the date of creation of the article, and you don't know how to call it. Well, okay. now you know. It is called created, right? And this is the same for okay, basically everything. You see? Wow. And sometimes, okay. And sometimes you have to dig, like sometimes the first level parameter, but sometimes it's a sub parameter. You have like uh, an array within an array, right? Yeah. So for some parameters, but at least for, and now this is the next article, this article for Germany, right? And again, I have all the available information. So, when you want to find something and you think, oh, I have no clue how I should do that, just use print R for the art for, for, for the article and mm -hmm. in, in this override an article is dollar item, right? Okay. And then you get everything. So now if I would just do um, what did I say? Create it. So if I say 
echo. I hope I'm not doing something stupid live. <laughs> um, echo created, right? Mm -hmm. And I will comment the previous line because otherwise it is very big right. on the page. So let's go back to this. Right. There you go. I have, I, I now display for each article the date of creation, right? Or if I wanted to say, oh, um, date create item. Okay, item title ends. You see now I display the title nice. and the date of creation. So actually it's very handy. I will uncomment this now. Just with this one line, when you're a bit lost and you say, ah, oh, I want to fetch something from the article. I don't know how it is called in the code. You just use that and you have everything here, well, which is available. Tip. So all the options of, a, of an article. Right. Okay, so um, we've been speaking for two hours, I think. Yeah. But I've not finished. Uh oh. Good. No. Everybody is tired, uh, <laughs> I guess. Uh, especially you, because you got up early. Uh, but... It's 5 p.m. now. Uh, the, well, yeah, for you it's five. For me it's uh, almost what is it? Ten after eight. Nine. Oh, yeah. No, it's eight. Yeah, it's eight. ten after eight. Yeah, Vinny says, but wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, there's more, but that will be quick. Uh, just um, I wanted to thank a few persons um, to start with. How did this, did this idea of a session about OpenStreetMap? Uh, arise after the last session i got an email from a guy i did not even know right uh -huh. uh, philippe and he, he was telling me oh mark um i watched the uh, the last um, the last session about the custom field and uh i've i've created two text fields one for latitude one for longitude real text field so he, he has to find by himself that longitude and look uh, by using an override and your custom fields, um, I've created a multi marker, uh, multiple marker map. And I thought, ah, interesting. Excellent. I had never thought of that with custom fields. Can you, can, can you share with me how, how you did it? And oh, sure. So he sent me the code. And, and that's how it all started for this session because of Philip contacting me. So it's very nice after the session, if you have ideas, suggestions, whatever. Just share. Uh, I've learned a lot by preparing this. I had never played with uh, maps before, and now I would not dare to say that I'm an expert, but uh, now I have some uh, some knowledge at least. Um, also, for different tricks, uh, I want to thank Alexandre. Like uh, these two lines of code to easily uh, fetch custom fields, even in overrides where they are not readily available. So Alexandre, thank you very much. Uh, for the clustering and the layers, thank you to uh, Philippe. It's like uh, when you have uh, uh, MTV awards or whatever. Uh, <laughs> it takes five minutes to thank everybody. Yes. Uh, so of course, for this custom fields, and especially for releasing new versions every time I would make suggestions, <laughs> I wanted to thank uh, the, the three of them have released new versions. So Tassos, uh, of course, we released yesterday uh, uh, the free and pro version of uh, uh, Advanced Custom Fears. Also, Adrien Roussel. Uh, and you can really make uh, very nice things. Maybe if I quickly find... Uh, this is not in production yet because it's not my website. It's the website of a colleague, a friend. But just to show what you can achieve with, uh, in this case, this Google Maps, right? Mm -hmm. 
uh, but it's for shops and those shops, those are pop-up stores, right? And so the idea was to have the opening hours of all the shops. Okay. Some shops are yet to come, otherwise other ones are opened, other ones are finished. So this is the kind of things um, we have done with Adrien's custom fields and extensions coming along with that custom. And of course, Fabrice, because uh, these extensions from uh, GMAP FP uh, are also uh, very famous. So thank you to uh, all of them. And who is that guy? Oh, no, yeah. All those sessions. Tim. That that hack. <laughs> oh yeah. And also, I wanted to thank so many members, the Juma community, for being J positive, right? Uh, that sounds cycle. like the results of a medical test that you're J positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, don't hesitate. If you have any suggestion, improvement, other ideas about custom fields, sources, uh, whatever, uh, just feel free to uh, contact me or to get in touch with Tim if you want another session about something else. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Well, Mark, thank you very much. That's you put a lot of work into that, and obviously, trouble had to do troubleshooting on a bunch of things as well. You suggested this. Uh, this is January. I think you suggested back early in December or something. So that is that is great. And uh, so, what are we going to do next? Do you have any idea? We we'll meet in person for the first time in uh, ten days. Yes, Mark and I are going to be meeting in Spain. So. Uh, when we are there for the focus for the future, a forum discussing Joomla, where it is now and where it's going. So that's going to be exciting. Hey, that's, uh, let's see here. Let's get your face on there large. I got to figure out how to do that. There we go. Get us, right. uh, this, this might get us side by side. Who knows? Uh, da, 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 stop participant sharing. There we go. We'll get in. Let's see. There we go. Side by side. That's how we'll be in Spain in 10 days. Side by side. We'll make some plans. Uh, just a few comments in chat here. Brian says, wow, I'm so impressed. Uh, Valerie says, once again, a great presentation from Mark DeChevre. Plus, he's a class act with his, with his acknowledgement of other individuals. Uh, yeah, Christoph asks, episode four, question mark. Chuck says, thanks, Mark, for your work and sharing with us all. And Brian said he would have loved to be in Spain, but he can't attend. So, yeah, so that's yep. too bad. Yeah, that will be uh, interesting. Yeah, Spain, That's my, this is going to be my first time out of North America. So that's uh, going to be a fun, uh, fun experience for me. So, Mark, you're going to have supper now. What are you going to have? One of the recipes? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I should go for a nap now. Yeah, I could use it's a nap. It's quite tiring to talk during two hours, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know what? The, uh, as much as this was early for me to get up, the great thing is that I have an 8.30 breakfast meeting that I probably would have been just as tired for. So now I can uh, now I can go and uh, hop in the car and drive to that, and I'll be enjoying some rye toast and some crispy bacon. So... Okay, good. Mark, thank you very much. That was awesome. And uh, yeah, it's my pleasure. It's going to be fun. Uh, just thinking of uh, all the uh, a lot of people are going to be using this in different ways because there's so many different applications for maps. But yeah, and not only speaking about uh, open street maps or whatever. If people have uh, built websites with custom fields, I mean, there are probably so many things that we, we can do that are never thought of so don't hesitate to share your uh what you have realized uh, your websites or your suggestions your ideas because um yeah there's a lot of fun to see uh, and inspiration from what other people have done like like this presentation it just it came because uh, philip uh, telling me oh you know what i attended uh, an override uh, session at the last Joomla day and uh, I followed your session and uh, look at the map I've made. And I said, oh, great. I had never thought I would be able to do that myself. Just with custom. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, great. 
So everybody, it's going to take me a little while to get the page ready with some of the links that uh, Mark has shared because I'm actually going to be out quite a bit today. But uh, so if you're watching this replay and you go down to the video description and none of the links are there yet, they will be eventually. And I'll add a note to that. But uh, all right. Well, Mark, thanks. You have a good supper. Everybody, yeah, thank you. everybody else there, have a good evening or afternoon or morning, wherever it is for you. We'll be back on uh, live on Monday with the ne next Maintenance Monday live stream. I actually already have a topic for that. And I have a couple of topics just from Mark today that I'll uh, put in just as individual things too. Uh, anyway, so head on over to basicjuma.com forward slash giveaways. Enter the monthly giveaway by uh, signing up for the newsletter. And uh, until the next time, everybody, enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless.